Hi everybody and welcome to my shop. I'm Frank from Frank's 3D Shop and today let's look at some example in Cura and what I do. <music> So today we're gonna look at Cura and what I do when I print a model. What is my process, what I'm thinking, what are the settings that I play with usually to get good results from Cura and my two printers. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, I think that using examples to show you what I'm thinking when I do a print and what I'm looking for is a good idea. So I'm gonna show you first this now iPhone stand. I made the iPad stand, but this is an iPhone stand. What I'm thinking right now is the hinge. The hinge, as you see here, has a gap. So we need to take this into account when printing and when designing this piece. This piece was designed with, I don't, I don't remember exactly. I think it's 0.3 millimeters gap or 0.2 not sure but anyway this would give me three layers of gap at 0 0.175 millimeters on the Mondo Price Select Mini printer which has those layer heights those are the from the mpselectmini.com site and I usually use 0.175 and if I want something more precise, I use 0 0.0875. Those are usually the two ones that I use. So now, uh, in this case, I'm going to use 0.175, 0 0.175. And what I'm thinking right now is the gap is good that 175, we get three layers. That's good. And then there is also the inside of the part. So if you look inside here, inside of the inch there is not only as there is a gap inside of the pin and only one line here so i don't think that this is good even the if you look even this side has some small gap inside and some lines that will be hard to print so since this is a hinge and an ipad stand i want it to be stronger I want it to be stronger so i think that doing a hundred percent infill would be good in this case let's look at what it does so here there's a full no gap in the in the walls everything is full at that size it's going to be better like that it's not going to do much difference on the print time or the material use but it's going to be sturdy it's going to be stronger with and easier to print also the walls as you see here the lines are parallel to each other so it's going to be easy to print that way it's going to be strong now i look at the bottom layer the bottom layer right now has a skirt which primed the nozzle for printing which is a good thing but this piece is really small and high up. So we need more bed adhesion or it will unstuck or it's going to fall or it's not going to be a good print. So in this case, I'm going to use a brim so that the part really stick to the bed. Even larger than that, I can use uh, 10 lines. You can define the lines or the width. Um, I prefer lines. So you have a good base from which the part will stick to and go up from there. And it's not that difficult to remove that brim. You just use a small exacto knife or a, a brim cutter. So I think that the, this part would be a good print. That That's what I use to print this. And you can go back and forth if you design the piece yourself so that the gaps are what you need on the print for the layer height that you have. Now let's look at, at this other example. It's another design that I did, half of a globe, earth globe. And in the middle, you see I have a, a hole for the shaft that goes in so that it can rotate. So what I need is a flat bottom so that I can 
glue together those two parts. So it's important in this case that my first layer is really squished down so that the bottom is flat. And also at the top, since I have a hole, oh, now I'm, I'm still at 100% infill. So that's quite a lot. That would be half a kilos of plastic. So it's important to go inside uh, and, and look at the layers. Like in this case, I forgot to remove the infill. So I'm going to show you with zero infill. So just a skin and this part as a, as you see here, it would be printed in mid air at the middle there. So that's not good. So we need, we need some infill in this case to hold up that inside tube. I think that 15% would be a good base. Let's look. We have enough support so that that tube will be printed well. It will, the printer will have no problem printing that circle and going up. And it's going to be, since it's used by, uh, in this case, it's used by students, it's going to be strong. So with that much infill, it's going to be strong. Now you see the outside walls, only three lines. Uh, in that case, I've increased that to four lines. So you can either enter 1.6, which is, which is four times 0.4, the, the size of the nozzle, or just four lines. And it calculates for you the millimeters needed. So four line would be strong enough in the case of this piece. So I'm thinking, you know, how it's going to be used. So it's going to be used by student. And also here I'm looking at the bottom. So you have the walls, but you also have the top and bottom. That's going to be a weak piece. So 1.75 is a good base. Since this is printed in two halves and the two halves are glued together, I could go with the smaller bottom and top thickness, but 1.6 is good. I'm going to have a wall of 1.6 and top and bottom is going to be 1.75. Uh, everything is a multiple of, in the case of the wall, multiple of the line width. And in case of the top and bottom, it's the multiple of the layer heights, 10 layers of top and bottom, which is 0 0.175 times 10. So you have to, to account for that. The layer height is going to influence the top and bottom thickness. You, you're going to have at least one layer, but if you want a precise number of layers, you have to adjust to a multiple of the layer height. So I'm looking at the overview. In this case, I don't need any build plate adhesion because first, I don't have the space. There is not enough space and the part is so big it has a big surface to print uh, you don't need any bed adhesion it's gonna stick well on its own so that's another thing that you have to account for how it's gonna stick on the on the bed and and all of this so i hope you enjoyed this little presentation and i think we can maybe do a series on that uh, if you have suggestions of, of models that you want me to try to print and what will be the settings that I use for a good print and why, put them in the uh, comments below and uh, I'll try to print them and report back to you. I think it's a good idea. Do you think? I'm waiting for your response. So that's it for me, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little video and please, as I said, comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. Push that little bell if you want to be notified of new videos. And see you in the next video. Ciao, bye. You can send them to me and I will... Siri, je suis en train d'enregistrer. Quoi?